Hello everyone. Last week we talked about how Arthas finished his journey into darkness and merged together with Nerzu, forming the Lich King. In his mind, he took care of the last remaining bit of good inside of him by stamming it with Frostmourne, as well as taking care of Nerzu's influence. No one tells me what to do. I've got everything I need from you. Now the power is mine and mine alone. Now there is only I. I am the Lich King and I am ready. With those words, the Lich King woke up and began his campaign against the world. But before that moment, several very important events took place that we do need to talk about. So, let's begin, shall we? As Arthas made his journey to Northrend, he left Kel'Thuzad behind to take care of business. Jaina Proudmoore, she took the survivors of Lordaeron, those that survived the events of the plague, they battled against the Burning Legion together with Thrall and several others. They won the battle, they blew up Archimonde and afterwards Jaina settled with her people in Ferramore, while Thrall and his people, they built up Orgrimmar. These two leaders were able to look beyond race. Remember how Jaina went to the internment camp when she was young, she didn't just see monsters, she actually saw, you know, creatures that could be pitied with and perhaps had to be released. So they worked together towards peace, they tried to bring some sort of peace between the Alliance and the Hordes. Sylvanas Windrunner teamed up with the Dreadlord Varimafras, and together they took the capital city and they formed a faction known as the Forsaken. The capital city is ours, but we are no longer part of the Scourge. From here on out, we shall be known as the Forsaken. We will find our own path in this world, Dreadlord, and slaughter anyone who stands in our way. All those able to free themselves from the Lich King's control, they found a home under the leadership of their queen, they joined the hordes, and Sylvanas had her people work on a plague while plotting her revenge. The Scarlet Crusade was formed, which evolved out of the Knights of the Silver Hand, the order of paladins that Arthas used to belong to. These men and women, they were dedicated to cleanse the lands of the undead of Lordaeron. They made some great progress as well with the legendary blade Ashbringer in the hands of Alexandros Mograine. I've done a full video on the Ashbringer. In short, it's speculated to be made out of the core of Anaru. It was infused with the Holy Light and it did decimating damage to the Scourge. Unfortunately, the Scarlet Crusade was infiltrated from within and the Dreadlord Belnazar, he worked on corrupting it. He manipulated Alexandros' son, Renaud Mograine, causing him to betray his father and stab him in the back with the Holy Blade. This action did not only corrupt the Ashbringer, turn it to darkness, it also placed his father in the hands of Kel'Fuzad, who turned him into a Death Knight. Now some of the members of the Scarlet Crusade, they did not agree with the path that they were on, they did not know that they were infiltrated from within, but they also didn't agree with how fanatic some of the members were. So they stepped away and they formed their own order called the Argent Dawn. Alexandros had a second son, Darian Mograine, who found out that his father might not be dead and still could be saved. He got a team together with volunteers from the Argent Dawn. Together they ventured into the floating citadel of Naxxramas in search of his father. There he found out the truth that his father was now an agent of the Lich King, one of the four horsemen. So with great effort he struck down his own father, but this did not end the torment. Alexandros was still bound to the Blade Ashbringer, connected to the corrupted blade. From the blade he whispered to his son to bring him to the Scarlet Monastery, where by this time Renault had been made Scarlet Commander by the Dreadlord. Lord Belnazar. Upon seeing his younger brother, Renaud tries to cut down the final reminder of his former life, but from the blade comes his father's spirit to bring sweet, sweet vengeance. The son slaughtered by the father he had betrayed, and yet Darian couldn't live with the idea of his father's spirit being trapped like that. He sought out the aid of the exiled paladin Tyrion Fordring, who told him that only an act of love greater than the act of evil that corrupted the sword would be powerful enough to free his father's soul. But he also warned the young Mograin that such an act is often the ultimate test of faith. With those words, Darian made his way back to the Argent Dawn, but before he left Tyrion behind, he told him that the Argent Dawn needed men like him. He was once a living vessel of the light. He could be that man, he could be the paladin again. He could be an inspiration, a force, a hero. At Light's Hope Chapel, they could see an army of Scourge led by Kel'Fuzad on the way to conquer the chapel and claim the fallen 
champions buried beneath it. The champions of the light, they put up a very fierce fight, but Darien saw that there was no way that they could win. Not even the arrival of Tyrion himself could change the tides of battle, so Darien embraced his destiny and he made the ultimate sacrifice. Only a test of faith, an act of love would be able to cleanse the blade and set his father free. So he took the Ashbringer and he stabbed himself. In response, the heavens opened up, light scoured the land, decimating the scourge forces and saving the day. Yet not all was lost for Kelfuzad. He might not have claimed the thousands buried beneath Light's Hope Chapel, but he did get his hands on a new powerful death knight. In death, Darien was converted, and with the corrupted Ashbringer, he would lead their undead forces into battle and fight against those he had sought to protect. Now in game, things went a little bit different. We were the ones to make contact with Tyrion and we tried to get him out of exile and we were the ones who assaulted the floating citadel of Nostramas way back when during Classic. Considering the overall storyline, I'm just going to assume that the events described within the comics, that that's the way it all went down. Now within the comics, we also read that Thrall and Varian, under Jaina's guidance, they sit down at Fethermore to try and get some sort of peace between the Alliance and the Horde. These peace treaties, surprisingly, went actually very well, until they were attacked and old hatreds quickly caused accusations to be tossed back and forth. Garrosh blamed the Alliance, Varian blamed the Horde, and the peace that they tried to achieve it was shattered. There was no way to sit down and try to discuss things further to try to explain the situation. Since the Lich King by this time he had woken up and he decided to let the world know by attacking them on all fronts. The wrath of the Lich King pre event happened and the Alliance and the Hordes, each of them separately, they launched their campaigns against the Lich King. It's begun. Young heroes, I was once like you. You have come to this place seeking to bring judgment upon the dead. You will venture deep into forgotten lands. see wonders beyond imagining. But be warned. The land itself will rise up against you. Long forgotten terrors will smother your courage. You will sacrifice everything as the final darkness falls. A new hero class was introduced in the expansion, namely Death Knights, who started their adventure within Echorus, firm under control of the Lich King. Each race has their own backstory, but none were able to fight back against the whispers of the Lich King, for the Lich King's will is first and foremost. Their mission was to destroy the forces of the Scarlet Crusade, who were stationed in this area, still remarkably untouched by the plague. With some very clever infiltration, a bit of plague here and there, and of course the devastating might of the Frostworms, the Scarlet Crusade was quickly defeated. Those able set sail to the lands of Northrend, calling themselves the Scarlet Onslaught, but the majority of them were pretty much destroyed. This left one more target for the Death Knights to take, Light's Hope Chapel itself. Led by the Death Knight, Darien Mograine, the Swords of the Scourge marched upon the chapel, yet the Warriors of the Light did not surrender. The skies turn red with the blood of the Fallen! The Lich King watches over us, minions! Leave all the ashes and misery in your destructive wake! I... I cannot... The 
blade bites me! You will do as I command! I am in control here! Yeah. Win, Darian! With the Ashbringer no longer listening to its master, and the Paladin, Tyrion Fordring, making his appearance, Darian and his troops, they were defeated and brought before the chapel. I cannot! The blade bites me! Bring them before the chapel! Stand down, Death Knights! We have lost! Have you learned nothing, boy? You have become all that your father fought against! Like that coward Arthas, you allowed yourself to be consumed by the darkness, feeding upon the misery of those you tortured and killed! Your master knows what lies beneath the chapel. It is why he dares not show his face! He sent you and your death knights to meet their doom, Darian. Save your breath, old man. It might be the last you ever draw. My son! Father! My dear, beautiful ah! boy. What? Father, is... you have returned. You've been gone a long time, Father. I thought... Nothing could have kept me away from here, Darian. Not from my home and family. Father, I wish to join you in the war against the undead. I want to fight. I can sit idle no longer. My son, there will come a day when you will command the Ashbringer and with it meet out justice across this land. You will bring pride to our people, and Lordaeron will be a better place because of you. But, my son, that day is not today. Do not forget. Touching is mine now. You betrayed me. You betrayed us all, monster! Face the might of Mograin! Pathetic. You're a damned monster, Arthas. You were right, Fordring. I did send them in to die. Their lives are meaningless. But yours. Apocalypse! That day is not today. Tyrion! Your end. Impossible. This is not over. When next we meet, it won't be on holy ground, Paladin. Rise, Darian, and listen. We have all been witness to a terrible tragedy. The blood of good men has been shed upon this soil. Honorable knights, slain defending their lives. And while such things can never be forgotten, we must remain vigilant in our cause. The Lich King must answer for what he has done and must not be allowed to cause further destruction in our world. On this day, I call for a union. The Argent Dawn and the Order of the Silver Hand will come together as one. We will succeed where so many before us have failed. We will take the fight to Arthas, and we will tear down the walls of Ice Crown! The Argent Crusade comes for you, Arthas! So too do the Knights of the Ebon Blade. Although our kind has no place in your world, we will fight to bring an end to the Lich King. This I bow! And so the Knights of the Ebon Blade, they stepped away from the Lich King and they teamed up with the Argent Crusade in their battle against the Lich King. Tyrion Fordring wrote out letters for the new Death Knights to take with them as they met the respective leaders so that they wouldn't simply be cast out as undead. As the world embraced the Death Knights, prepared their forces, even the magical city of Dalaran was rebuilt and sent flying off to Northrend. Dalaran was going to help with the campaign against the Lich King as well as Malagos and during the expansion we found out what was going on in Northrend. 
There were three major storylines going on during the expansion. You had the war with the blue dragon aspect Malagos. You had the old god Yaxaran, the Titan Keepers and all the events with Ulduar. And then there was, of course, the Scourge and the Lich King. I would love to tell each and every little detail about this expansion, but that would just take way too much time. So I'm going to briefly touch on the events in each zone related to the Lich King, and then we'll dive deeper wherever it's needed. Borean Tundra is one of the two locations for the Alliance and Horde's main point of entry into Northrend. The Horde build up Warsong Hold, while the Alliance build up Valiant's Keep. Both factions work on securing the area, taking out the Scourge, and here we find out that Kel Fuzad is still roaming about, so Nocturamus is sure to make a return, and we also help out the Death Knight Vasarian with saving General Arlos and his sister out of the hands of Valanar and the Lich King. Now this is a surprise, Thassarian. I hadn't heard from Mograine or the other Death Knights for months. You've come to rejoin the Scourge, I take it. I would sooner slit my own throat. You would pay for what you did to your own men, Arthas. For what you did to me! I swear it! Howling Fjord was the other entry point into Northrend. Here we find out that Tyrion Fordring, he's gone undercover in an attempt to sneak in undetected. Unfortunately, they also decided to transport the Ashbringer separately, but Ares the Oathbound, charged with bringing the artifacts, he has fallen. He places a blessing of light upon us, asks of us to bring the artifact back to Lord Irulan Trueblades. Upon doing so, Tyrion removes the disguise and he proclaims that he's done with letting others sacrifice themselves for the greater good. He is done with playing hide and seek, and he gets himself ready to assault Ice Crown. In this area, we also find out about the Vraiku, titan creations that were cursed by the old gods. These are the ancestors of the humans who went into hibernation, but they woke up again sometime around Wrath the Lich King, and they've now allied themselves with the Lich King, who they call their death god. We try to put a stop to their plans, we even kill the wife of King Ymiron before she wakes up her husband, but the Lich King shows up and he takes their king to Utgard Pinnacle, where we would later take him out. Not yet, Ymiron. I have other plans for you. You will serve me better within Utgard Pinnacle. And if these insects survive to find you again, you will get the chance to avenge your wife. The Vraiku were not only found in the Howling Fjord, and some of them, they competed for the Death's God gifts. The modern day Valkyrie, for example, their creations of the Lich King, they are created from female Vraiku of Valkyrian. Only those that proved themselves worthy were blessed with this gift, and at Jotunheim, they held a competition to hopefully ascend and become Ymir the elite warriors of the Lich King. Those that failed and lost the battle at Jotunheim, they were turned into Vargu, a lesser form of undeath, because they were not found to be worthy. Within Grizzly Hills, we find out that Archmage Arugal, he's been resurrected as a ghost by the Dark Fallen Princess. Arugal was responsible for summoning the Worgen from the Emerald Dream, but he did it with good intentions. He tried to use the Worgen to protect Gilneas against the Scourge, but the Worgen not only took care of the undead, they also turned on his people. Driven mad with guilt, he adopted the Worgen as his children, and he retreated to Shadowfang Keep, where heroes would later take him out. Now they try to use him again to convert the population into Worgen, but we find out about their plans and we put a stop to it. In this zone, we also meet with a troll named Drakuru, who tricks us into believing that he will help us out with cleansing Drakvaran of the foul undead and restore it to its noble purpose. In truth, he plays us like little pawns. He was working for the Lich King all along, who grants him great power for providing him with a new army. Arise and accept my gift.
His next task takes him into the next zone, Zuldrak, where he works on claiming the area for the Lich King. And with the help of the Death Knight Stefan Vadu, we infiltrate Volteris. We convince Drakuru that we're working for him, but we're actually sabotaging their operations. In the final confrontation, Drakuru calls upon the Lich King to help him out to save his life. But instead, the Lich King beheads him for his failure, while sparing our lives since, apparently, we amuse him. What treachery is this? You be paying for this deceit with your life, man. This foolish treachery has cost you your destiny. <laughs> Master, this mortal scum be double-crossing us. They must be made to suffer. Failed me, Drakuru. It is you who should suffer. Be content that your death is a quick one. As for you, I spare your insignificant life as a reward for this amusing betrayal. There may yet be a shred of potential in you. shall require much more to justify your life. In Zuldrak, we also find the Argent Crusade in the middle of two forces. On the one hand, they're fighting against the Scourge, while on the other hand, they have to deal with the Drakari Trolls. These Trolls have begun sacrificing their own Loa, their own animal gods, to fight back against the Scourge. A Zandalari tribe has also showed up to intervene on behalf of the gods, as well as witness the end of the Drakari Empire. We do whatever it takes to stop the madness. We team up with the Loa, and we even go inside of Gundrak, their capital city, and we put an end to the Drakari. Sholazar Basin has always been able to protect itself from the Scourge from the undead, but the Cult of the Damned has been able to infiltrate it and do some serious damage to one of the pillars. These pillars were used to protect the zone and now the way is open for the Scourge to rush in and take the land. With the aid of Avatar Freya, we find out about a titan creation called Etimidian, and with its destructive force, we take out the Scourge. There is one more zone that I'm going to talk about today, which is the Storm Peaks. Here we find out that Muradin Bronzebeard, he's now the King of the Frostborn, and he goes by the name of Yorick Stormheart. When Arthas picked up Frostborn, Muradin didn't die. Instead, he woke up with total amnesia, and he was picked up by a group of the Frostborn Dwarves. A gigantic young attack them, but Muradin is no pushover and he single-handedly brought the worm down, saving the dwarves. This earned him the name York Stormheart, a name of legends, and over time they made him their king. During the questline in Storm Peaks, we team up with Muradin's brother, Bran Bronzebeard, in an attempt to get access to the archives within Ulduar, and during this questline, King Stormheart helps us out. Bran wants to meet and thank the king for his help, and as they reunite, Muradin's memory returns. He tries to remember his life before he joined the Frostborn, and all he remembers are nightmares of a human. Tall, light hair, death black armor, Arthas. Muradin feels responsible for letting Arthur slip to the dark side like that without doing anything about it. Regrets won't change a thing though, only actions can make things right, so Muradin would later join us in the assault upon Ice Crown. The assault upon Ice Crown, the events within Dragon Blight and beyond, so many more things to talk about ladies and gentlemen, yet I'm going to call it for a day. Next week we'll dive further into the campaign against the Lich King, we'll finish talking about the zones in Northrend, and we're going to knock on Ice Crown's door. So for now, thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!